Ohio, and of course operated now mainly as a corporation. As we kick off June as Dairy Month, I hope you'll stay with us because after the break, we're going to visit Grandma Wright as she shares with us how she makes butter the old-fashioned way. She churns it. That's coming up right after these messages. For results you can count on, count on Country Mark. Summer heat really reduces feed consumption, and that's why sows need high fat in their rice and for maximum pig production. New Country Mark High Tech Sow Supplement HF keeps sows supplied with all they need to produce a maximum pig crop. Get Country Mark High Tech Sow Supplement with high fat. When the heat's really on, count on Country Mark. Turkey, it fits today's lifestyles. No wonder turkey consumption is increasing. The bird that used to be primarily for Thanksgiving is now the any day, any way, turkey. Turkey fits today's lifestyles because it's easy, elegant, economical, has excellent nutrition, is exceptionally delicious, and it's versatile. In all forms to all people, turkey provides high quality nutrition for a more healthy diet. When turkey is compared to other meats, the natural winner is obvious. Just bought the 16 horsepower yard tractor from our local Ford dealer and we really love it. It's loaded with features, easy on and off because the shift is on the fender. A tough twin cylinder Briggs & Stratton 16 horsepower commercial engine. There's only one problem with owning this new Ford yard tractor. I never get to drive it. See Dick or Steve, Mid-State Power Equipment, Carroll, Warren or Dennis, Ford New Holland in Circleville. See Jeff, Don or Gary, Delaware Tractor Sales in Delaware. From planting to harvest, your marathon distributor knows how important it is for you to be ready to roll when conditions are right. The right product when you need it and where you need it. Depend on marathon quality petroleum products and the friendly prompt service of your marathon distributor. Call him today. In Radnor, see Bill Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer Distributing. In Bucyrus, it's Tom and Dave Roberts, Roberts Marathon. And in Piketon, see Melby and Selby Williams, Williams Oil Company. We continue now with our dairy special. We've moved to west of Baltimore, Fairfield County. And I want you to meet now a lady we've known for a long, long time. This is Hazel Wright. In this area, she's known as Grandma Wright. And Hazel, you've made butter how many years? I made butter when I was a girl at home. And uh, the last, oh, I say five or six years, we've been making it here on the farm. Let's begin, because we were out where you were taking the cream, but let's share. You just don't let cream come to the top. You let it set a while. Uh, cream has to raise for about 12 hours or more before you can skim it. And you certainly brought back some memories when you showed me that pasteurizer that you use, because that's what we had when I was a boy. We'd bring the gallon pail from the barn, and so you do pasteurize the cream. We pasteurize the cream. That keeps the... Cr the the uh, shelf life of the butter longer and that doesn't sour on the on your table then we saw you pour the cream into the large churn. glass jug a large glass jug or churn but you used to use the stomping method we used to have the um, uh, dasher churn where you dashed up and down pushed up and down to dash it but you found this little electric motor and you let it do the work the motor does the work now and it's years old it's, I don't know how many years it is. I bought it at a farm sale and uh, used it off and on ever since. So, we saw that churning process. How long will it take to make cream into butter? It depends a good bit upon the temperature of your cream, but it usually takes half to three quarters of an hour to churn a churner of butter. But then, we saw you dump it out of there into a bucket, and you went through a procedure that you call washing. We wash, we put cold water over the fresh churned butter to wash the milk out of the uh, butter to keep them butter sweeter. Longer. But let me back up just a tad, Hazel. The first that you poured out, would that be what we would call buttermilk? First would be buttermilk, and then, the, then each washing gets uh, more clear. You wash it till the, the water's clear until you get all the milk out And it of takes you three times? It takes about three times. Uh -huh. Charlie estimated you put in about a gallon and a half 
of cream, and that's going to weigh somewhere in the area of 12 pounds. How many pounds of butter do you think uh, we had? Well, we'd get approximately three pounds for butter. butter. How many times do you do this a week? We, Every week or not? No, we just churn when we have the cream. Sometimes, sometimes we have plenty of cream and milk on hand, and we, we churn. And then uh, we, after we get the butter churn, we put it in the freezer, and it, it'll keep a long time in the freezer. Now, I use what Marilyn gets from me. It says slightly salted. Do you salt it? We don't salt it at all because the Joneses don't like salt, and so we just don't salt it. And the viewers are going to see, Hazel, that it's not a bright yellow, is it? No, it's not a real bright yellow, but you could add coloring, but I don't bother using coloring. And when you spread that on that toast, ho oh, ho, just excellent. But Charlie shared something I think we should uh, point out to our viewers. When you were stirring with the old butter paddle, he said when the pioneers were heading across the western plains, they would use it as axle grease. That's what, uh, that's what I've read in the book that they use it as axle grease. Hazel, thanks so much for showing us how you make butter the old-fashioned way. She churns it. Our guest has been Hazel Wright, in this area known as Grandma Wright. Stay with us now because we'll take you to Goshen, Indiana for the Dairy Farm Products Company where they make butter the modern way. Welcome to Goshen, Indiana. We're not too far from South Bend.